Today, Dion is going to guide us through the huge release, new release of uh, of the Blender Beam Madden, the very first one from 2021. Hello, Dion. What's happening here, man? Hey, Petra. Um, yeah, this is a really huge release, and it has a uh, big impact on what Blender Beam can do today and what it will be able to do in the future. And you're right, it's the first release of the year, and we usually try and do a release at least once a month, so we made it on the very last day. Um, and essentially, almost everything under the hood has changed in this release. All the code has been, from the past year of development, has basically been rewritten in about a month. So. Um, with a lot of big changes, there are probably a lot of um, issues that come with it. So a word of warning for people who are trying out this release that it could have issues. Well, it must have issues. Um, but, but that said, um, if it does work, there are uh, some really interesting aspects that uh, I think we can discuss today. Yeah, that sounds very good. Let's go through the most important features. Yep. So I guess as a user um, who, who is not too worried about under the hood or technical or code or all that type of stuff, there are a few things which make this release really, really exciting. And uh, all of them are written down in the release notes, which um, I'm sure a link will be provided and you can read in detail. And you can also see uh, a big list of all of the individual tiny changes that were made. Uh, but at the very top, you'll see a little summary of what the biggest impact is going to be. So I guess we'll just go through one by one and I'll elaborate a little bit more uh, compared to what I've written down. So the first one is pretty self-explanatory. It's zero data loss during import or export. So right now, uh, almost everybody's experience with OpenBIM revolves around using an import or export feature in another application. So they would model it in, in, in their application, and sometimes people call this the native model. And then they would press the import button or the export button, and that would convert to or from an IFC uh, to or from the uh, native model. And uh, there are lots of problems with that, because the whole point of IFC and international standards is for us to collaborate seamlessly with one another. But you can't really do that if um, you have to rely on an import export because every time you rely on an import export, uh, there is a translation or mapping that happens between your native model and the IFC model. And I think everybody who has done this process is very familiar that you do get a huge amount of data loss whenever you import or you export, you know, you, and, and, and this is a significant amount of data loss and some, and it's not just data loss. There's also a, a lack of understanding of where the data is stored. So let's say you, you have some BIM data stored in your model. And when you press export, you're not even sure if it's there. Like sometimes you have to double check whether the export did it correctly. And sometimes it might turn up in a different location that you didn't expect, or there might be data in there that you had no idea uh, existed and was just automatically generated. So users have extremely little control over their BIM data. And that is against the whole concept of collaboration and interoperability. What we need are applications where the user can trust their BIM data. And the only way to do that is to treat IFC as a native BIM format. And that's exactly what the Blender BIM add-on does. So now with the Blender BIM add-on, when you are editing your BIM model, you are editing IFC directly. You are not um, relying on an import or an export translation. And the result of that is that there is now zero data loss. You don't need to worry about certifications or whether somebody has tested the import or export or whether there are workarounds for, for each vendor. All of that goes away because what you see is truly what your BIM data is. There is wow. zero data loss. But was this is this any different than it used to be the previous version of Blender BIM or this has been the whole time the case? Sort of. So in the previous version of Blender BIM, there was still a translation. 
However, uh, the translation was quite minimal because the way the system worked was that it took the IFC structure and it copied it into Blender. And that was that's very close to having zero data loss, uh, but it's not zero data loss. So for example, things which he hadn't implemented it. So for example, a lot of uh, uh, MEP type um, features which are have not yet been built into Blender BIM, that data would be lost. Um, so over time, Blender BIM has uh, had more and more support for the spec, but it never had 100%, and, and, and zero applications out there have 100% support for the spec, that's just the fact. And so everybody has data loss. Blender BIM tends to have less data loss due to the amount of support it has, and also the fact that there's not much translation. Because other applications, they have had decades of history behind them, where they would be, uh, uh, where the way you do things in Revit or the way that you do things in ArchiCAD, the way you do things in TechLab, that's the way you do things. And then when you export or import into IFC, somebody has to decide, how do you translate the, you know, the, the, this way of doing it to the IFC way of doing it? Whereas Blender BIM never really had that translation. The way it was designed in Blender was from the beginning, very, very close. But, that, but that's the distinction here. It was very, very close, but not perfect. But now that's what this release does. It makes the jump from very close to perfect. So uh, yeah, I guess the, you don't need to worry about it anymore whenever you Congratulations, man. Then this is, this is really huge. This, this is really, really huge. Correct. It means that users can trust their BIM data. Because in the past, people would treat IFCs um as as a transfer format almost you know uh, or, or a reference right you you export it but that's it it's a dead end nobody touches it anymore anytime you want to update data you have to update the original native and then rely on a on another trend you know on another translation and as a result of that you never really had interoperability it was always a dead end you know between project phases or when exchanging stakeholders people would redo the same work again and again and again simply because they couldn't they couldn't take advantage of all that ISC data but this changes things finally there is an application and blender bim's not the first one we have to give credit where credit's due uh, i i believe this approach uh has been implemented before but it's but it's extremely rare and, and i can't name a a common commonly used application but if, if people watching this do know, I'd love for them to leave a comment on other applications which do use this approach too. But finally, we now have a, um, a slightly more accessible application where everybody can say, yeah, we can now, between project phases, between exchanging stakeholders, keep this IFC data and progressively, incrementally add more and more, make it richer, make it cleaner, instead of kind of just saying, yeah, here's a file, it kind of exported, you can look at it, don't fully trust it, and uh, you you kind of just ignore it after a while. That's very important. That's very important. And uh, I had um, two days ago, uh, there was somebody, a civil engineer from Germany, who uh, who we talked about a little bit during my live uh, daily live streaming. Um, he he uh, uh, had this challenge. He needed to export from Alplan and get it to a structural analysis software. And he needed to export from Alplan to, uh, after that import in Tecla, and after that to export to that software to get in the right place. And uh, who, uh, God knows only what happens behind the scenes. You don't know anything, right? So it's very, very nice that now we have a tool that you can, you can audit your IFC file and trust in it, that this is how it is. And uh, you, you start understanding, you, you can see what you, how you can understand maybe better how the other application is exporting the IFC file or I don't know. What do you think? Absolutely. Absolutely. Previously, people almost had to learn all of the quirks that happened during translation and the workarounds, but it shouldn't be like that. That's not how inter interoperability is meant to be. And this really changes uh, the game. And that, and, and we so far we're talking about current projects, but this also applies to historic projects, right? Every single, all this this um, heap of digital data that people are creating on every single project, at the end of the day, 
you always get two files. You get the IFC and you get your um, your native one, and the native one expires. Over time, it sort of just fades away, and you're only left with the IFC, but people think that you can't do much with the IFC. But So for all your historic projects, you now have a whole bunch of IFC files because the, late, the native ones are long gone. And well, this now offers you a tool that people can use to maintain and upgrade and uh, their digital uh, their, um, their re digital real estate portfolio, essentially. So all historic projects can now be uh, you know, um, maintained across the lifetime of the building. And, and it costs zilch. It doesn't cost anything. It's free, open source. Correct. It's all free and open source. <laughs> oh my God. Thank you, man. Thank you for doing such a great work. It, this is amazing. I, I, I'm, I'm mind blown. It's, it's amazing. Regarding the, um, uh, the native format of the files, of the IFC files, right? Like the Blender Beam uh, add-on is doing this. Uh, and you mentioned that um, the, the other applications are just translating or the, they try to to spit out depending how they understand they should spit out the, the the file right would be there any things that they can do better like do you see would be possible that the other applications can get it to the same level as blender beam to to be to have the cap capability to um to use it in a native way without doing this distorted uh, import export kind of um yeah i mean it, it's uh, you they could use the the previous approach that blunderbim used which was to just build more and more support of the spec and improve the mapping until it and and the user ex experience around that mapping but that's a really really hard task um and almost a never-ending task so i'm not entirely convinced that that's the best way to go but absolutely that is definitely an option that people can take no, but but I understand. I understand they have interests. But if they want to comply with building smart and with everything, but at the end of the day, if they would, let's say, if they would have the willing to do that, would that be possible from an implementation po uh, point of view? Everybody can do what um, I have done here with Blender Bin. Okay. Absolutely, everybody can do that. There's there's no technical reason why other people cannot take the same approach. Um, yeah, I, I guess it's just a matter of willpower. Yeah, and if they do that, what they lose doing that is that um, after that, uh, each application would differentiate, differentiate itself from others, just how how they have the tools built inside, how you build, how you work with one or another, right? Or they, they are afraid to lose the, the leverage they have inside their application or what what reasons do you hear do you think they have that they don't want to open more well let, let me uh, try to clarify a misunderstanding here okay this is just because ifc can be treated as a native format doesn't mean that makes um applications useless like every application becomes the same uh so for example um let's say i'm editing a brand new ifc file now in Blender, I can apply something called a modifier. And this is some, if, if somebody has done visual programming before, you might uh, understand this concept as a bit. So let's say I have a whole bunch of cubes which are being arrayed, um, something like that, let's say. And now let's say I want to do a, a neat little trick here. And I want to go and um, apply this empty object as an offset. So just a moment. Let's let's do something interesting here. All right. So this is a, a crazy shape that I created in about, I don't know, how whatever, under a minute. And 20 seconds. Okay, great. <laughs> we can we can fact check that. Um, so IFC does not have the capability uh, to store this particular type of parametric transformation uh, within the IFC data right now maybe in the future it might but right now it does not therefore uh, this is one particular scenario in that having a native application which uh, which augments or or complements the IFC functions 
uh, with with more features on top can be useful. Whereas the base BIM data is still a stable foundation that everybody can trust. Whereas there are sort of, uh, I guess, user level extensions or application level extensions that do particularly neat tricks uh, that that we might need on 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 complex tasks. Whereas all the basic needs, like you know, a wall is a wall is a wall. Um, you know, most applications, do, a wall is a wall. <laughs> yeah. All that becomes part of the basic package, and we're no longer, com you know, we're no longer stuck on one application simply because we have to deal, you know, because of, you know, uh, everybody wants to use those walls. Now we can switch between applications, and in fact, I can use Blender to model aspects. Uh, which which do this type of cool thing that I could do in 20 seconds, and then I would switch to FreeCAD, which would then go use its particular strength in in um, a, a parametric hierarchy of uh, modifications, and, and then I could switch again to SphereJock to do visual node programming, or uh, I could then switch to a, another application which offers a really awesome interface for costing or scheduling, and each one of these can specialize. Um, on different aspects and add little bits, you know, their little flavor of usability improvement or, or even cool tricks, just like like the one I have right here. Um, and so it, it doesn't remove the, the need for native applications. In fact, this just makes it better because now I can actually build half my model in this app and then switch over to another app and then switch over to a third app and have people from 10 apps all using different applications which use the best tool for the job. So then, then what is the reason then? They just don't want to co to make the industry more cooperative, or what? What is the reason if if losing a oh, competitive advantage? Is not... <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. We'll let you. I mean, yeah. We can speculate. Yeah, we we can speculate. Um, <laughs> I think we've, we've we've made the point. Zero data loss. That's the, that's the the words you need to remember. 